Time seems to be a construction of the brain because we can easily manipulate it in the laboratory. So you think something lasted longer or shorter or something happened in a different order. And there are many physicists like Einstein who, who were very clear on this point that time doesn't actually exist, but, but we're trapped inside of it. In the yogic way of seeing things, we just see life as a dance of time and energy. It's a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy. Actually, to put this time and energy together in a proper, weave it together well, if your time gets over when your still energy is vibrant, we say this is an untimely death. If your energy gets over when your still time is on, it's a vegetative life. To the art of putting this time and energy together so that both of them play together, dance together well, is a successful life. So when we say time, there are many, many things we can do with energy, but our time is ticking off at the same pace. We may think many things, we came to this talk, we went to the cinema, we went to the university, we went here and there, but as far as physical body is concerned, it's going straight to the grave because it is keeping time. Your brain can be easily fooled, <laughs> but body is properly keeping time, never you can fool this body, all the time keeping time because time is a consequence, time is not a factor by itself. Time is a consequence of cyclical movements in the physical reality. We know time, if, if the earth spins once, we say it's a day. If the moon goes around us, we say it's a month. If the earth goes around the sun, we say it's a year. Our idea of time has come essentially because of the cyclical movements of everything that's physical around us. This is the nature of physicality. Physicality is essentially cyclical, whether it's atomic or cosmic, everything is cyclical. The moment you're identified with physical nature, time is a big factor. If you dissociate yourself with your physical nature, if you sit here and if you have a little space between you and your physical body, because what you call as my body is an accumulated process. It is something that you accumulated, it's just a piece of the planet. If a little space comes between you and your body, suddenly time is not a factor. To such an extent, we have any number of people, this may be very difficult for uh, a Western audience to digest, but I have seen yogis who have not moved from the place they were sitting for over six months, seven months, just in the same place. By any normal standards, your body should not survive that. But once they sit down, they won't move, just like that, not moving at all. Because once you distance yourself from your physiological process, time is not a factor. Right now you're sitting here, it's not your watch which is keeping the time, it's your body. If I make you sit here for three hours, your body cells says it's enough. But suppose you did not have a body, we're going to sit here for three thousand years, what's the problem? So essentially, because of your rooting in your physical platform, which you call as the body, which you built over a period of time from the accumulations that you gathered from this planet, that is the basis of experience of time. If you distance yourself from that, there is no consequence of time on you.